my paintings and therefore this room, I think, do divide opinion. They're normally settings which are very obviously domestic, of bathrooms, of bedrooms, with very kind of tight, controlled geometry. But the kind of the safety of, of those homely spaces is under threat from these entire weather systems coming in through the windows, uh, destroying the space, splitting it apart. You know, I'm interested in depth of experience, so it's far more important to me that there'll be a handful of people, hopefully, if, if the rooms have worked, who really connect with them, as opposed to creating something that everyone, on a kind of a bland level, thinks works. You know, I'm not trying to make hotel art. I'm not trying to focus this entirely just around a vague, comfortable night's sleep. Yeah, I've got no, I've, I had no interest with this commission in making a room where the, the painting became a kind of a decoration or a wallpaper or, or a backdrop. I think what it's a really unique chance to do is to make a painting which someone actually lives in. They'll get to a point where I've, I've done a lot of thinking, a lot of research, and I'm kind of full of ideas, and it has to then shift into finding visuals. And normally, my mode of doing this happens to be performance. So I look to become the character. So I create this kind of the second skin, this costume from concrete and paint and, and loads of other things kind of mashed together. I will then film and photograph a whole performance. The idea being, I will make new digital images, collages, cutouts, which will be the kind of the cast of characters for new paintings. What's quite strange is it's quite an unsettling, odd, uncomfortable experience. You've got this like slip of sticky, cold stuff that's all over you. And you do feel like you really have stepped into another character or that somehow um, there's this other thing that's kind of stepped inside of you. By creating multiples of images, you might end up with hundreds of the same one and thousands of the same one. This project is part of a kind of a wider interest in the character of Paul Tom from Shakespeare's King Lear. And the particular scene that I'm interested in is the, is the cliff scene. Edgar, who is disguised as Paul Tom, comes across his father who is at this point blind and suicidal and he wants to go to the cliffs of Dover and jump to his death. Paul Tom decides to take him to an imaginary cliff edge because he doesn't want his father to commit suicide. And it's that space and that kind of moment at which his father is about to step off what he thinks is a cliff edge and it exists for a tiny little millisecond within the play or within the script. But actually, the kind of the psychological ramifications of it are huge. You get so immersed in this process. You know, I'm spending days and weeks and every kind of waking hour in the same space. Out of nowhere, you realize it's 11 o'clock at night, that you've not eaten all day you've not been to the loo, um, that you're suddenly dehydrated. You really have become totally lost in this process. All the ways in which I go about my professional work, about my paintings, mirror exactly uh, my, my patterns of behaviour and ways of being in everyday life. And it's this kind of habitual, very narrow, very focused down, repeats of the same things. Well, I've got quite strange eating, and certainly up until the age of about 25, I basically had very limited. I had no meat, no vegetables, no fruit, no rice, no pasta, uh, which pretty much left nuts, bread, cereal. And every single day I would eat the exact same thing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, I, th I think I had even from a young age like, a sense that my certain ways of being were quite unusual. You know, you've got this cliff scene that is the cliff scene of the theatre, the cliff scene of Dover in Lear. But the room is also taking this idea of what would it mean to take the cliffs of Sidmouth and Devon, where I grew up, and to bring those indoors. What might it mean to bring the kind of the storm scenes of Devon uh, into the rooms at Battersea? I played tons and tons of little games when I was a child, often by myself, and I'd play often the same game kind of day after day. 
I used to play this game with berries. I collect 128 of them exactly. I basically used to race them against each other down a, down a hill in pairs, uh, all the way until I had a winner. To some extent, all of these games were slightly about a kind of a stubborn, um, a stubborn desire to have control, to kind of create order around things. In these kind of grids of paintings where each square might broadly look similar, to me, each of them is a window on an entirely kind of different um, world, if you like. And it's, the same th it's the same thing really with those games or things like the berries. Each little race is ridiculous and um, you know, slightly absurd as it was. Each little race had its own narrative, its own story. And I'm kind of fascinated by that, that you can repeat through the same things, but then things are never quite the same. They're never identical. If you're willing to kind of give them the time and pay attention to them, those tiny changes are actually monumental in terms of what, what it opens up in terms of a reading or in terms of ideas. Um, I left Devon when I was about 13 and my dad stayed there actually right until he died fairly recently. I'm very aware of the exact, well, even what I feel or want, you know, say about this, but it was quite a complicated um, relationship that I had with him. The, the scene of Port Tom and Gloucester at the cliff edge has always spoke to the various kind of layers of the relationship and its past, but, you know, particularly since his death. Like obviously the whole scene is focused around this idea of a, a kind of a blind suicidal father. And yeah, I suppose it's provided a kind of a safety blanket and a, a kind of a framework really to, to filter all of that stuff through. There's obviously a point where you just think, I, I can have as many ideas and thoughts as I want or intentions at the beginning, but it doesn't mean they're there at the end when I leave those last marks. What excites me is that you know, new people are going to come in, they're going to be living in there for a period of time, and that they, in essence, become the, the kind of the central character in, within the painting.